my name is Ernie Crummy from the Austria Aviation Society and uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, coming here this afternoon to hear something and I stress the word something about some aspects of Ulster's aviation history. Ulster has uh, an aviation history which in my humble opinion compares more than favourably with any region of these islands that you would care to take and in fact in terms of its scope and importance uh, it is a much more appealing history than some regions of these islands. Now people of course are the lifeblood of history. The very first man that I want to make reference to, you'll see him on the screen there, it is of course none other than Harry Ferguson about which uh, this week's events here in Newcastle are all about because it was Harry Ferguson who inaugurated Ulster's aviation history when he in December, in fact on the very last day of December 1909 first flew successfully at Hillsborough in, here in County Down and thereby became the first Irishman to design, build and fly his own aircraft Lots of people remember Harry, of course, uh, for uh, more well-known reasons, his invention of the three-point linkage and the tractors and everything else that flowed from that. In fact, the man is a household name worldwide for having revolutionized agriculture. Uh, far fewer people realize that prior to all of that, he was Ireland's first aviator. The man was a genius, in fact, in my, again, humble opinion. Another amazing thing about Harry Ferguson was that uh, the, remarkably, the remarkably short space of time which it took him to design and then begin work, complete work on his first aircraft and fly it. And so having built this first variant of his aircraft, uh, he took it to Hillsborough to see if um, he could get it to fly. Now why he took it to Hillsborough uh, we're not just 100% sure, not, for those of you who know Hillsborough, not ideal country at all. And in fact, this first variant of Harry's aircraft did not succeed in flying. And so he was then obliged to uh, go back and uh, think things through a little bit further, which he did. He also uh, discovered the benefits of a site at Newton Arts. Uh, at the head of Strangford Loch um, and the adjoining land which, which interestingly enough uh, in later years then uh, became the site of Arge Airport and of course is still the site of uh, Newton Arge Airport in this day. I'm, I'm Jim McGowan, I'm the current chairman of the Ulster Model Aircraft Club. Our club was formed, uh, I can't just remember the date offhand, but it's the oldest club in Northern Ireland. Uh, we have about 65 members presently, and we fly on a car park site at Nuts Corner, which is quite a good site. Uh, we're lucky having a site like that with hard standing. Yes. A lot of clubs in England, believe it or not, have only grass fields, which they have to keep mowing and all sorts of things, you know. Yes. Most of the models, I think, uh, my own opinion is, a tiger moth, which actually was a plane, believe it or not, they trained Spitfire pilots on. One of the first RF trainers. Another one is a Mustang, which is an American aircraft, which I think had a Packard engine in it. The plane didn't fly all that well, it wasn't very good in air battles, and they decided to put a Rolls Royce Merlin in it, and it made the plane an entirely different plane. The thing ended up one of the world's best aircraft and pilots love to fly it. Uh, another thing about a Mustang is you can build a model, model Mustang true scale and it'll fly. A lot of planes when you build them scale them down, like a Spitfire for example, you've got to cheat on wing surfaces and things like that because build it through, through scale they will fly. Mainly because we haven't got the power Spitfire hot. Now the hobby has changed over the years. Uh, a lot of ready-to-fly models now which come factory built, you sort of simply open the box, slip the wings on, put an engine in them and f fly away. But old models like myself still prefer to build from plans 
using balsa wood, light plywood, all sorts of things. Uh, a lot of fiber loss models now. The result is, unfortunately, a lot of young people coming to the hobby now don't learn the building skills. They only buy a model. When they crash it, which we all do, they throw it away, they buy another one. Where years ago we repaired our models, still do. Now, the Red Arrows find ourselves on our timely arrival. Now, the aircraft is due to arrive here at exactly 16.45. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've just spoken to Red One, and he's telling me that he's on time with nine aircraft. So, ladies and gentlemen, here they are, the 2010 Red Arrows. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the 2010 Red Arrows. 